Okay, so in the last step, we created a new material and then got the material editor open. So in this step, what I want to do is quickly talk about what all the different panels in the material editor are for. So let's jump straight into that. So as I've already covered, this entire window is called the material editor. As with the level editor, at the very top, you've got the tab bar and the menu bar. The tab bar shows you which tab you're currently working within, and it offers you the option to move tabs around and dock them to different windows like we did in the last step. The menu bar is where you can find all of the menu options available for the material you're working on. And as you can see, these are file, edit, asset, window, and help. Next is the toolbar. And this gives easy one-click access to a range of tools and actions that you'll make regular use of. This includes saving your materials, applying changes, searching within the content browser and your material, and toggling display options such as allowing nodes to update in real time. This area here in the top left is the viewport. And in this panel, you'll see the material you're currently working on being displayed on a mesh. You can move around this viewport in a similar way to how you move around in the level editor. You can also change the type of mesh your material is being displayed on. These mesh options include cylinder, sphere, plane, and cube. This panel here is called the details panel, and it contains all of the properties of the material or material expression or function node that you currently have selected. You'll use this panel to make changes to the properties of each part of your material. This big area here is the graph panel, and this panel displays a graph of your entire material. You'll be able to create and connect a range of material expressions and functions, and they all work together to create your material. This window can quickly become confusing, so it's important to keep things as neat and organized as possible. The node that you can see on screen here is called the main material node. Over here, taking up pretty much the entire right hand side of the material editor is the palette. And this panel lists all of the different nodes that can be included in your material. To add any of them to your material, you can drag and drop them from this panel into the graph panel. There's also a search box at the top of the panel, which makes it easy to find the nodes you're looking for. And finally, down here at the bottom, we've got the stats panel. And this panel contains important information about the material you're currently working on. So that includes a number of shader instructions and any compiler errors there might be. It's worth remembering that the fewer instructions there are in a material, the lower the impact will be on the render time. Okay, so that concludes our quick tour of the material editor. In the next step, we'll be using the material editor to change the color of this material. So join me in the next step for that. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your learning further, I recommend an introduction to Unreal Engine 4 by Andrew Sanders and Unreal Engine 4 Game Development Essentials by Satish PV. Check them out using the links in the video description below. Special thanks to my awesome patrons whose names are displayed on screen for supporting this video. If you'd also like to support my channel, then go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.